I did not expect that last minute surprise for them to ask me to So I guess this is where our day starts today. It is just before noon. I've just arrived at Yaskuni Shrine right here in Tokyo. I've got my shamisen on my back because, well, today, today is a shamisen day. And can you hear the sounds of the cicadas? Woo! Summer, summer is here. Woo. The main part of the festival doesn't start until later on today, which gives us an opportunity that we don't usually get, which is to see what the shrine looks like while it's still quiet. Let me show you. This is actually pretty exciting. So this festival had become so big and so popular for a while that they had actually taken down all these food stalls or what Japanese call yatai. This is the first year in a couple years that they put the yatai back up and there's a lot of them. Check this out. This is new. I've never seen little watermelons before. Look at that. They're like the size of my hand. That is so neat. And this place is going to get so crowded later on today. If you could eat any one of these right now, what would it be? And did I mention that the location of this shrine is by far one of my favorite things? You see, Tokyo, one of the things I love about Tokyo is the fact that even within the city, there's always some form of nature or shrine hidden. Over on this side, we have the Imperial Palace and everything like that. And the Yasukuni Shrine and the whole festival we've got going today is over on this side. I love it. excited about having the opportunity to play today but I'm also just as excited about how wonderful this festival is and sorry it's really bright and blown out but look at this I get to go in here into the Kaikan, an area that I never get to go to, but I've got to change into a full kimono and hakama for today's performance. That's right, full kimono and hakama in 36 degree weather. This is gonna be a fun day. <laughs> in a kimono somehow feels wrong. I don't wanna fight with you. It's so hot. A little behind the scenes, we are backstage right now. It is hot out there. Like it was hot before, but kimono and that heat is just... That was so unexpected. I did not expect that last minute surprise for them to ask me to come up on stage and play a solo piece. Whew. Exciting times. <laughs> really quickly let me get changed and then we can reflect on this and do the thing that I'm probably the most excited about right now which is just get to the festival <laughs> the sun's gonna go down pretty soon we still got a few hours but so many people have showed up so many And there are a few 
few greater challenges than going up the stairs in Hakama. You just always feel like you're gonna fall. In reflection, the opportunity to play at this particular festival, one of my favorite festivals here in Japan, is one that I never thought in a million years that I would have. It's kind of mind blowing, and I feel like I'm gonna need a little more time to reflect on it. But for now, I will say that I'm moderately pleased with how the performance went. It definitely could have gone better. I'll leave some more of it at the end of the video for you guys to watch, but. Since we're here, why don't we take a minute and do some beautiful B-roll of this festival before evening hits, because when evening hits, things get really good. Oh, do you? Yeah. It's nice to meet you. I'm Norm. Um, sport. Come up and say hi anytime. Okay. <laughs> awesome, man. Cool. See you again. See ya. I keep running into people like, like I ran into Drew here. What did you think about the performance? Um, it was awesome. I got it all taped. This is Victor from Frame of Travel. What's so. up, guys? We ran into each other in Shinjuku one day. I think I did a video called like I love days like these in Japan. It'll be linked here. Another brief interruption. I just ran into this guy. This is Tyler. You might know him, Doga TV, all that stuff. There is a really cool secret that I want to show you. Do you like secrets? Yes. Okay, because because I have a secret. What secret is that? You see, hidden behind Yaskuni Shrine, there's actually like a, a secret garden in pond. No way, really? Yeah. Okay, this is our second time shooting this. I messed up the audio so bad the first time. Okay, let me let me take you guys through it. So the situation is, we had actually started out on the other side of the shrine, and there's this little pathway that leads behind it. Now, this is a pathway that I've used every year for almost 10 years to explore this little hidden pond area. You see, Victor here had never seen the pond, so I was like, oh, I've, I've gotta show it to you. Yes, yes, I do lose the audio quite often. But do you think it's viable to check the audio of every single clip? No. You're gonna waste your entire day doing that. Yeah. I do check like during intervals though, which is how we figured this out. Somebody lost their watch and people were kind enough just to like leave it right there. But I kind of feel like leaving it on the edge there the trash can. might run the risk of it like getting thrown away. Yeah. When you turn in a lost item in Japan, they'll ask to take your personal information in case the owner of the item wants to send you a personal thank you or give you some kind of reward. Yeah. It's a lot of paperwork and you don't need a reward for turning in somebody's watch. Like you would just hope that someone would do that. Oh. 